My name is Zorcius. Once a novelist. But after losing my memory, I couldn't complete any valuable writing. Now I'm just a private detective with my clients. Until I receive this strange request. Investigate an infamous estate and find a man's lost daughter. Besides the check, it was the name on the letter that intrigued me. Not Orpheus, but... Nobody knew, but me. Somewhere that's been deserted for ten years. This room's in remarkable condition. I think I'll stay here for the night. But it's too dark in here. I need to find an alternative light source before the fuel in this lantern runs out. Thank God. The candles here still burn. There should be some more on the wall. It's all psychological. These candles really calm the nerves. A paper airplane? Hmm. Something that children usually play with. Someone was probably playing around and it got caught up there. Then. Rad, scared by the light, shook it from the lamp. Who made it, though? This is what I can deduce from my initial analysis. But the paper used might actually contain some information, from which I might find other clues. This looks like a page from a diary. Interesting. The date is from several days ago. The person who wrote this is most likely connected with her missing person. Although I can't write anymore, I still have an uncanny ability to sense the emotions of a text. This is an ability most people do not possess. By reading the text, I can attempt to reconstruct the scene, and even find out information about the author. This seems to be the place where the game was played. The description mentioned an attic attached to the main house located some distance away. I think we are still at the manor, but it seems we're some distance from the main house. For now, I need to focus and retrace the steps of our mystery author. Huh. I should probably drink less.
Judging from the content, my guess would be that our author is male, right-handed, and of average education. From here onwards, the writing becomes even more wild and illegible. Fear has stripped him of his ability to describe his encounter with any logic, as if something was hunting him. <gasps> <laughs> the diary suddenly stops here. What on earth does that mean? A carnival. It reads like something that was written by a lunatic. I really hope that Mr. Reichenbach's daughter is not involved in this. What I really need to do now is find the rest of the diary and find out what's happened here. There should be other clues among these sheets of paper. The black powder seems to be charcoal. Hmm. The answer is probably close by. There happens to be a fireplace here. There's charcoal in the fireplace, but no diary. That's not surprising. But something else has attracted my attention. The unburned firewood. The chimney has been sealed off. Seems the owner didn't use the fireplace, and its true purpose remains unclear. There must be some more clues around here. Candlestick is. I think I know why there's an extra candle here. It's firmly attached to the fireplace. It seems to actually be a part of the fireplace. This is pretty important. Thank you. 
used to detest bedtime reading when I was a child. Trying to find a diary with a missing page in here is like looking for a needle in a haystack. The search for one specific diary is no longer important. All of these diaries are significant. so odd. It is obvious that these entries were not written by the same person, which means that they were insane, or something else happened here that I do not yet understand. Hmm. They've raised more questions than they have answered. It seems I shall have to apply a somewhat archaic method to obtain the information that I need. I think I can catalog the particulars of all the authors into profiles, based on the information I've found.
content of a few scattered diaries is connected. I think they're describing the same game. According to this entry, the author describing this game is a doctor. The entry from this doctor is more detailed and complete. I think this would be a good place to begin.
As for the hunter, I'm still not clear about his role in this game. But perhaps it would be better if I try to approach the problem from another person's perspective. seem that the rules don't apply to the hunter. The hunter has hindered everyone since the beginning, regardless of their actions. But how was it that no one resisted the hunter? Was it because of the hunter's strength? Or has everyone simply yielded to the hunter's dominance? Does the hunter take pleasure in this game? Or to put it another way, is that the real purpose of this game? It is ironic that the emergence of the Hunter has forced this group of people, who had opposing interests in the beginning, to work together. I need to find out more about the situation. The information on the Hunter is key. I need to know what he wanted to do next. Technique. Patterns, disposition, traits, everything.
that he didn't want others to touch. Or to trap them, even if someone wanted to try their luck. Their location would surely be exposed because of the accompanying scream they would let out when pricked. Simple, yet effective. I think the hunter must have used a pair of iron gloves to avoid being pricked by the thorns. to rest a while. I'm exhausted. <laughs> About ten years ago, I was found unconscious at the scene of a fire, due to an accident. I wasn't injured, but when I woke up I realized I had lost my memory. It was with the help of others that I learned I was a fairly well-known writer of detective stories, but I could not recall a single memory, even when reading the words that were written by my own hand. Slowly, my body recovered, but my memory showed no sign of returning. Fortunately, memory loss didn't occur again after that incident, and I was simply content to live with this new identity. Things rarely turn out as one hopes. I was quickly discarded by the public since I could no longer write anything of significance. And the detective firm that I started wasn't getting any worthwhile cases. I gave up on myself and turned to drink. I began having these episodes. After drinking heavily, I would wake up the next day with cuts all over my body. Sometimes I would come to, only to notice strange objects I would not normally use next to me. At first I chalked it up to alcohol-induced blackouts, but even after I sobered up, the situation persisted and there were no signs that the episodes would stop. It got worse, and the blackouts lasted longer and longer.
In the end, I realized the root of the problem. At least, according to my neighbors. It wasn't memory loss, but another soul in my body that had awakened. I don't trust the other guy. Even now I don't know what he's done while I was asleep. <gasps> suddenly appeared and said to me, trust yourself. Of course I trust myself, but not him. I need to prepare for the worst. If he really had something to do with this, I need to be able to prove my innocence. Who's gonna believe me when I say that two souls can exist in one body? This is not a time in history when people believe in things like witchcraft. And these diaries are the key.
Sometimes, investigating a case is like fumbling your way along a rough, dark path. No one knows what strange treasures will be dug up before the truth is revealed.
This painting seems to be upside down. There seems to be something on the back of the painting. This mark.
Dun-dun. Mmm. 